This Megan, it does not appear to get Huma Abedin off the hook. Sure, well, nor Anthony Weiner, who nor remains Anthony. in legal limbo. Great to see you here in New York. Joining me now in a Kelly File exclusive, Congressman Trey Gowdy, who investigated Mrs. Clinton as the chairman of the House Benghazi Committee. Great to see you, Congressman. So, your reaction to Director Comey's announcement today? Um, well, I have kind of focused on the seminal word in his letter, which is the word conclusions, plural, uh, not singular, plural. He had a lot of conclusions in July, including that she was extremely careless in the way she handled classified information. She didn't turn over all of her work email, and she both sent and received information, including that which was marked classified. So there were myriad conclusions he reached in July, and I think his use of the word conclusions today, plural, uh, was important. Mm -hmm. To say we have not changed our conclusions since July. And yet, clearly this, this closes the book on the question of criminality insofar as the feds are concerned and her email, does it not? Oh, I don't think so, Megan. I think it closes the book based on what they know now. But, you know, 10 days ago, we didn't know that Uma Abedin had failed to turn over all of her devices. Investigations are never over unless a statute of limitations has expired or unless jeopardy has attached. So this investigation is over based on what they know, but, but they don't know what they don't know. And, and Megan, my other point is, I mean, can you imagine a closing argument of having to spend the day before a general election saying the FBI was not able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt every element of a, cl of a criminal offense. Mm -hmm, yeah. If that is the closing argument for a presidential candidate, they got other problems. Well, in the end, she, she chose not to mention it. And I think for the very reason you just suggested, their team understands that's not exactly how they want to reinforce their message in these next couple of days. Do you think this had, because they're saying, look, this had a real effect. And you heard Trace's report about how she thinks it hurt her with independents and Republican women who were reluctant to support Donald Trump. Do you think this, that the Comey decision nine, ten days ago actually might affect if, you know, perhaps the presidential race, and if not that, some of the, the Senate races that we're watching that have been pretty tight? Uh, no, ma'am. I think her decisions have impacted uh, female voters and independent voters. I think it's just a reminder that most of what she has said on the email issue has been demonstrably false. That is not Jim Comey's fault. I'm not upset with Jim Comey for sending the letter today. I thought he had to, just like he had to eight or nine days ago. She is the reason that we are discussing this hours before a general election, not Jim Comey. Mm -hmm. That's important to note because Comey's had a lot of attackers uh, out there, but you defend him. You think his decision in July was sound, as was this one. Before I let you go, you too are facing a re-election on Tuesday, and it's, you know, your favorite to win. We'll put it that way. And yet that hasn't stopped you from releasing ads like this one, which I think our viewers will enjoy. Watch. That Trey Gabby really goes after him, doesn't he? I'm telling you, the man's fearless. He's fighting Obamacare, Hillary, wasteful spending. Know what I like most? Gowdy's consistent. Conservative. Yep. Steady. Got a good head on his shoulders. Don't know about that hair, though. You do remember I'm still sitting here. Just saying. Trey Gowdy, consistent conservative, inconsistent haircuts. This is Trey Gowdy, and for some reason, I approve this message. <laughs> it's true. You, I like that you recognize that about yourself. And, you know, the, the facial hair is also slightly inconsistent. If you know about it, why don't well, you Megan, do something of there? <laughs> I, uh, I, I have had a lot of help in recognizing that weakness over the last six years. <laughs> Um, I can tell you this, I am the only politician in America dumb enough to run a negative attack ad on himself, but I <laughs> thought people needed to laugh uh, in the last couple of uh, days before an election, and I'd rather them laugh at me than me poke fun of somebody else. Amen. We did need a laugh, and just for the record, I can relate on the inconsistent hair. It's great to see you. <laughs> All the best. Yes, ma'am. You too. Thank you. So what does this mean for the election on Tuesday, this Comey News? Joining me now in a Kelly File exclusive... Reince Priebus, chairman of the Republican National Committee. Great to see you, Mr. Chairman. So, um, Thank you. Thank I mean, you what, did you, what did you make of the FBI today? Look, I'm, I, I know you liked what they did nine days ago. Do you like what they did today just as much? You know, I, I, I kind of, number one, I, I wouldn't want to step on the eloquent words of Congressman Gowdy. I mean, he said it best. Uh, I think any time the Clinton campaign's talking about whether or not she gave away state secrets, 
in a sloppy mess is probably a good day for us, but it's a bad day for our country. Um, and I also agree, even before Trey laid it out so nicely, but th there's nothing that says this thing is over. And in fact, I, I, there's going to be more emails. I mean, it's just, it's over in regard to this new trove of emails, but there will be more. And so the point is, can she be trusted? And, and the answer is no. She can't be trusted when she was given one of the most precious jobs in America. So you think and that's that why there's a chance the FBI the might, re might reopen an investigation again if they get more evidence on her email? Well, yeah, I think Congressman Gowdy laid it out. I mean, it's the truth. If they find another, you know, I don't know how many Blackberries she had. If they find another Blackberry, if they find another computer, okay. if, if, if they have other documents, they're going to review them and, and there'll be another letter back to this committee from Comey saying, guess what? We found this. Let's so shift gears now. We're going to restart. Because now we're, you know, we're yep. day and a half out from the voting starting. I mean, the, the day of voting sure. starting. And I want to get a feel for where you think the Trump campaign is in the presidential contest. Is the latest uh, national polls that have come out show uh, Hillary Clinton has rebounded and uh, uh, regained her national lead. One poll has her at four points up. One NBC Wall Street Journal poll has her at five points up. Well, I mean, there's other polls that show Trump up, but here's where I think we're at. If just you look one, at the evidence, just the LA Times the, poll, which has consistently you, showed him up. And the, the I entire think the cycle. IBD poll too, I, and I think the IBD poll came out as well and, and had Trump up by two points. But f f put that aside. For She's a second. up one in that one. I Mr. think Chairman. you got to look at where the early vote is uh, in Florida. We're up about 100,000 votes from where we were four years ago. In North Carolina, we're up about 120,000 votes from where we were four years ago. We won North Carolina. We're up in a big way in Ohio, and we're up, as compared to 2012, in a big way in Iowa. We are tied in Michigan, if not uh, slightly ahead or slightly behind, but clearly both our data and the Clinton data in Michigan is saying the same thing, that it's very, very close. The same is true in Pennsylvania, and the same is true in New Hampshire in the 2nd Congressional, Congressional District of Maine. Mm -hmm. You go out to Colorado, Megan, and ballots that have already been counted show, as to Republican-Democrat registration, that we have an 1,800-vote lead in Colorado, which what is about, a shocker to a lot of people. What about Nevada? Go because ahead. Uh, John Ralston sure. out there, a well-known guy who, who tracks the polls and watches the electorate there, he came out and said Trump is finished in Nevada, he's dead in the early vote, and the Hispanic turnout has been historic. Yeah, well, we love John, but, you know, he, he said he says the same thing every two years about Republicans in Nevada. I do like John, uh, but it's something that we hear all the time. Look, it's going to come down to the ground game and, 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 and Trump's closing argument on Tuesday. One thing people need to understand, and it's just the truth, we've gotten a lot better at early vote. Uh, this year as compared to four years ago, and we did better two years ago than we ever had. But Republicans tend to vote on Election Day. Mm -hmm. Republicans tend not to like early voting and absentee ballot voting. So we have lagged over the years in this year. We've complained a lot about it, but we didn't get good at it. And now, as of late, we've gotten a lot better. Okay, the last, last vote, question. The last data question. score shows us much better. Last question, because i got to sure. go. Your prediction on Electoral College final. I think Trump's going to be over 270. I don't know if, if, if Pennsylvania's going to fall or Michigan's going to fall, but I predict that one of those big blue states is going to go to Donald Trump. We've never seen anything like it. 25,000 people today uh, in both Minnesota and Michigan. How about it, the Senate? It is something that no matter what you think, it, I think we're going to be uh, at least at 52 in the Senate. We'll hold the majority. Oh, well, you heard it here. Mr. Chairman, great to see you. Thanks for being with us. You bet. Also here tonight, Mo Alifi. He served as traveling press secretary on Hillary Clinton's 2008 campaign. Mo, good to see you. So let's just pick up with that point that the two Republicans who were just on made, which is any day she's talking about, a few, I'm not facing criminal charges for jeopardizing national security. And as it came out today, letting her maid print out classified documents on her apartment and walk them over to her uh, is a bad day for Hillary Clinton. What say you? Yeah, I, look, I don't think there's any question that what Comey did two Fridays ago uh, really kind of threw a wrinkle into everything. Um, and, you know, it, it couldn't have been a worse time, right? I mean, for 10 days, this, this specter of, you know, are they reopening the investigation was hanging out there, allowing the Trump campaign to, to promise that, you know, there's got to be something big there. Uh, and all this conversation was happening as early voting was going on, mm -hmm. only to find out today, 
that there wasn't anything big there, that there wasn't anything new there that uh, would uh, change the July findings. So I think the, the Comey decision two Fridays ago was, was a problem um, for primarily the FBI, but I don't think it was great for the Clinton campaign. Having said that, She's still leading. And as you just pointed out, she's rebounding in the national polls. She's taking a pretty good lead in a couple of the key battleground states. And we're seeing the early vote among the African-American community and the Hispanic community really exploding over the past three or four days. Where? Because the um, early reports were that the African-American turnout had been disappointing thus far. Yeah, that's the, the Hispanic by you, you're vote right. had, had been good for her. You're right. That was the early report, right? But what we've seen, take a look at South Florida, Broward County, where we've seen turnout primarily uh, uh, in the African-American and Latino communities beginning to outpace what we saw at the same period in 2012. Why is she so, so concerned about Michigan from the, from the appearance of it? It looks like it's tightening up, right? Uh, but at the same time... That, I mean, but, how, but put that in perspective for the viewers. How big a loss would that be for Hillary Clinton if Trump turned look, Michigan? Uh, yeah, you know, we'll see how it how it turns out. I think the people on the ground in Michigan and the Clinton campaign feel like they've got to do some late work here, but that they'll be able to um, to hold on to it. Uh, having said that, you know, it could flip. It could go red this time, um, which is why they're trying. They're, they're fighting so hard for it at the end. But even if she does lose Michigan. And this is an important point. Even if she does lose Michigan, the way the map is looking right now, Trump has to run the table in a bunch of states that right now it does not look like he'll be able to do. Uh, his path to 270 is still far, far more narrow than, than hers is. And, you know, she's looking really good in Pennsylvania. The early vote in Florida should give Democrats a little bit of a bounce in their step. Same can be said over the past few days in North Carolina. Nevada, you know, these are all states that Trump has to win in order to get there, as well as pick up a Michigan mm -hmm. and maybe one other blue state. Mm -hmm. He can't do all he's that He's got to get right the now. Romney states, plus he's got to steal one of the blue states. And, uh, That's right, the and is, he's not doing that right now. One that has a, a bunch of electoral votes, ideally. Mo, great to see you. You too. Almost there. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton locked in a high-stakes game of chess over a couple of key swing states that could decide it all come Tuesday night. Two of the country's top political analysts are next on the 